When most people experience something unknown like Bigfoot, it's usually in the form of sounds. Sometimes these sounds can be loud, frightening howls and screams. This is what happened in 1963 to two police officers in the Sierra Nevada. I got that story as well as others. That's next. Okay guys, I am in the Sierra Nevada this afternoon. It's pretty hot down below, but it's nice and cool up here. And for tonight's beer, today's beer, I have a rogue bat squatch hazy india pale ale i just dropped that in the creek here and that says it is a 6.7 abv so it's pretty strong beer and it says dedicated to the legend the legend of bat squatch or squatch squatches <sighs> there we go oh it didn't get shaken up in my <sighs> backpack oh i can already smell it wow very strong aroma. See the color on it. Not too sudsy. Wow, it's very powerful. It's almost got like a fruity, fruity smell to it. Aroma. All right, let's give it a shot. Right away, it's a, you can tell it's a strong beer. Got a really nice finish to it. It's a very beer flavorish to it, but um, really nice, kind of almost a dark beer taste to it, but kind of light and fresh too. So I don't know, it's a India Pale Ale, it's a hazy, so I like those. All right, cheers. So over the years, I've talked to a number of people with their own stories and of encounters and their experiences with potentially Bigfoot and Sasquatch. And many of them, like I said, their experiences in the form of sounds and something they've usually heard at night in the forest, in most cases. And these sounds can be howls, yells, screams. Sometimes they sound like a person in distress, just screaming out. Sometimes there's brush breaking, tree branches breaking, trees being pushed over, rock throwing, and even sometimes there's paralleling, which is they hear something in the forest on either side of them, and it's walking or running with them while they're moving through the forest, usually on a trail. They can't see it, but they can hear it. Really frightening. Sometimes there's whistles, grunts, growls, and even sounds like someone talking in a unintelligible language, almost like mumbling or there's a conversation of two of them. And some people call this samurai chatter and there's other names for it. But this is what many people experience when they experience Bigfoot. So in 1963, the Union Democrat newspaper out of Sonora, California. And this newspaper was established in 1854 and it's still in existence today. It had an article, January 28th, 1963, and the title read, 10-foot shrieking monster reported near Cold Springs, California. Now Cold Springs is on the west slope of the Sierra Nevada mountains in the Stanislaus National Forest, which is almost 900,000 acres of forested mountains, ridges, valleys, and lakes and rivers. Great country up there. Just down the mountain from me where I'm at right now. And the Sierra Nevada is like 400 miles long, so it's an immense area of wilderness. Now this newspaper article was based on a police report, and this is what it started out saying. A horror tale of a 10 foot tall man led sheriff's deputies last night into a dark brushy area next to a subdivision west of Cold Springs. Cold Springs has 675 people in it's a very small town. And then it goes on to describe these two police officers and their interaction with this thing. The article went on to say that the officers were unable to spot anything but they heard 
and had reports of these horrific loud shrieking sounds coming from the forest. According to Deputy William Huntley, he said there was definitely some creature in the woods and it was making sounds he'd never heard before. His partner, Albert Miller of Cold Spring, who was also a woodsman, agreed. He said he'd never heard anything like that in all his years in the forest. Now this was all touched off, kicked off by an anonymous phone call from a resident right in that area and he didn't want his name to be put out there and he said if I do that you guys will think I'm crazy and you'll put me in a straitjacket. He reported seeing a man that was at least nine to ten feet tall standing in the middle of a road near a gravel pit that was just north of this subdivision. He said it was moving around, it appeared to be human, but it was the most awful thing he'd ever seen. He told the officers, I'm an adult, I'm scared, I'm not crazy, I'm not drunk, and I don't even drink. And then he had a friend come on the phone who, again, this guy wouldn't identify himself as well. And he said, I heard these screams and these loud shrieks. And I also saw a 14 inch footprint that night. So officers Huntley and Miller drove to this location and immediately they heard these shrieking sounds, just horrifying. And they said it sounded like a man in distress, great distress, but it did this over and over. This is what it sounded like. And then they said over the police radio to the dispatcher back down in Sonora at the police station, they said it's heading right towards the car. Here it comes. It's now circling our squad car. It's definitely some sort of animal. They could not see it in the brush at all. They just could hear it. Officer Huntley said it's definitely not a bear. And his partner Miller said, it sounds like it might be a mountain lion but it doesn't sound anything like a mountain lion. They both started screaming at it and it did not scare it away. So they drew their pistols, got the flashlights out and went into the brush towards the sound. And they said the sound, the screaming, moved away from them. The officers were forced to go back to Cold Spring because their gas was running low. Apparently they had the car turned on the whole time, had the lights on so they could talk to the radio dispatcher and be ready to take off if they needed to at a moment's notice and just put it in drive and get out of there. So they came back as quickly as they could and the animal was still shrieking and screaming in the forest. They still could not locate it but they could just hear it moving around them and over here, then it was over here, and they did this until 1.30 in the morning. Then it stopped, and it was gone, it disappeared. So they left, they came back early the next morning looking for anything to try to solve this mystery. Footprints, broken tree branches, rocks, anything, and they, didn't, they found nothing. They said all there was was pine needles and thick forest, and it was kind of frozen over, but they found nothing they decided they're going to come back that night and see if this creature came back for a second visit. I didn't hear what happened after that. The article didn't explain that, but what a scary encounter for two police officers in the middle of the night in the forest and drawing their guns and going right in after it. Very courageous. Wow. <laughs> so in the summer of 2017, I was in the Plumas National Forest up in the Gold Lakes Basin. I was by one of the lakes and I was camping by myself. And it was a walk-in campsite. And what that is, is you take your gear and you carry it down the trail to a location. So it's not backpacking where you go a lot farther out and you carry everything in a backpack and it's not car camping, it's kind of in between. And I, wanted to just have a nice night by myself. It was July and there was a campground at the other end of the lake and there were some people camping there but I was by myself. There was no other people in these couple other remote campsites, these 
walk-in campsites. Now I've told this story before on my channel a few years ago. I'll put the link in the description below for the full video. But this relates to our first story about people hearing sounds in the forest and a lot of times howls. And I had my tent set up in this little spot. It was near this lake. And on the other side of the lake, later that night, I heard this high-pitched, loud sound. And I'm just going to play the clip from the video for you so you can hear what I had to say about it. So I went back to Goose Lake. I remembered the walk-in campsite. Now this was October again, so this was like exactly a year later from when I saw the first set of footprints, the little teeny ones. I go to this walk-in campsite and I pick the farthest one to the south end of the lake. I set up my camp, have dinner, super starry night. In fact, early in the evening the moon came out, just enough to illuminate. And on the other side of the lake, I hear this howl. Not a coyote, not a dog. There's no wolves out there. And it was this high-pitched, kind of with, a, with some bass to it though, and it went, and I, and I remembered this because it was like a, a, uh, a bell, bell chart. It goes up, over, and then back down. And it went something like this. But louder with more bass, and, and I immediately caught my attention and I hadn't gone in the tent yet. Fire was out. Moon was kind of going away. It was, so it was getting dark, but the stars really came out really nice. And I went, wow. Okay, and I heard, as soon as I heard the woo, it felt maybe like, is that a crane or something? Or some kind of a crane? But I went, God, that is so, it's got such bass to it. It's just, it just, it did sound like a bird. <laughs> and it was clearly on the other side of the lake because I'd been there all afternoon and early evening and then now night. And immediately after that, south of me, I heard coyotes, a pack of them. And they weren't like singing, they were more like responding, not necessarily communicating I mean I don't know for sure but it they sound like they were reacting or responding to this and then it happened a second time and I'm like wow I started getting some chills because I was like okay I'm at this end of the lake I'm by myself I felt pretty vulnerable and my campsite was in really thick brush and I'm like okay you know, we'll, we'll get through this. <laughs> it's just a howl. And then I heard it a third time. And then it was quiet. And it was, I didn't hear anything else. Beautiful starry night. So it was a very intriguing experience for me. And a little unnerving too. Because I kept thinking, is this a crane? Is this a... I don't know what this is. And then... Slowly over time, I figured out this might be possibly a Sasquatch. And then the coyotes responded and reacted to it. And then I had something come up behind my tent later that same night. So you definitely want to see the, the video I did a few years ago on this. But what an experience to hear something that you've maybe heard on the internet and you've heard other people talk about it and then now to hear it yourself and so I was uh, I came up with the flashlight and stood up and I was kind of smiling going is that what I think it is oh my gosh so this next story is from one of our viewers his name is Mitch and he's from Illinois and in 1993 his parents had 120 acres of land that's a lot of land near Fairview Illinois and he helped them build their house. And there was a couple lakes on this property. 
And one of the lakes, they built this kind of a turnaround drive-through thing. They could drive down to it and he could go there and they would go there as a family and hang out and do some fishing in this lake. And they cut the grass so it was nice and manicured and they built a dock and they had some boats and it was kind of their own private lake, really. And he said it used to be an old gravel pit and there was another lake behind it and there was a steep slope on one side of the lake and one afternoon he went out in this small boat with a trolling motor, went out to the middle of this lake, and he heard this loud screaming sound coming from this thick vegetation about 60 feet away from where his boat was in the forest. This, some loud screaming sound. Immediately the hair went up in the back of his neck, and he felt like he froze just for a moment, just like not sure what to do. And whatever it was, was definitely could see him because he's in this lake and this thing is in this really thick vegetation. He sent me a picture of this lake and you could see the vegetation behind him. And I'm from the Midwest and I know what this, these forests can be like in some of these areas. And then it happened again, this loud scream. And it was very similar to the scream I played earlier. He said it sounded just like this. He said, holy crap, Chris, this is exactly what it sounded like. He said immediately, once that second scream went off, he dropped the trolling motor, went as fast as he could, and it's just a trolling motor. You can only go so fast. And he had to go, he's, I think, about 500 feet to the shore. where, he, And he, he said he rammed the boat right up onto the shore, immediately got out, threw his gear into the truck, grabbed the motor, threw it in the boat, and he took off and left. And he said his parents weren't home. He drove right by his parents' home, went home, and a week later his mom said, hey, uh, how come you're not fishing this weekend? Because he'd call, gone fishing every weekend. And he said, oh, I've just been really busy. And he didn't want to talk about it with anybody. He just didn't want to talk about it with anybody. He finally told his wife, and I think he said his brother, but I'm going to play his interview here. And it's really interesting. It's such a simple event, just hearing two howls, but how it affected him and how it changed how he thinks. And he said he's never gone to this lake fishing by himself ever again. So I'm going to play that story for you right now. This happened in 1993, and you were mm -hmm. fishing uh, on this small lake. Well, this is uh, probably about, uh, I'm guessing, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, so it was still it was still bright out. And uh, it was a real pretty calm day. You know, the, there was no breeze hardly at all on the lake, so it was real calm. And I, uh, I was on the east side of the lake, which is the one with the really high um, bank that I told you about. Mm -hmm. And on the other side, just all this, just out of the blue, I heard that scream. And that's the only way I could describe it was a scream. And I just, I know I muttered to myself, what the F was that? <laughs> and uh, I sit there for, for a couple, oh, maybe a minute or so. Then I heard it again from the same spot, and I was looking right at it, right at right the area where I heard it from. I didn't see any movement or anything, but I heard it again, and I, and I just kind of went into, you, you talked about the fight or flight mode. I went into flight. <laughs> I said, that's, that's it, I got, I got to get out of here. I, I had no place to go. I was in the middle of a lake. Yeah. The only place I had to go was back to the dock. So I just hurried as fast as I could to the dock, I rammed the boat up on the shore and full speed <laughs> and I unhooked the battery in the motor from the back of the boat, pulled the boat up on shore and I just grabbed everything and just threw it in the back of the truck as fast as I could. I didn't worry about how tangled poles or anything like that. And the whole time I was doing it, <clears throat> I didn't I didn't even look over my shoulder. I just wanted to get out of there. I didn't want to see if there's anything there. And I just drove out as fast as I could and this is a really rough road you couldn't go real fast mm -hmm. but I just got out there as fast as I could went straight home and wow that, that was uh and like I said I I didn't go back out there by myself 
I went up fishing again, but I didn't go by myself. <laughs> yeah, and it, really, it really spooked me because I'd never. Really? I, I'd been in the woods. I, I I grew up in that area, yeah. and I'd oh, been. Yeah. I, I'd been. I was in the woods my entire life since I was like ten years old. You know, mm. and and I was real comfortable out there by myself until then. So it, it really spooked me. <laughs> wow, uh, how close do you think it was? Between sixty and seventy feet for me. Wow, that's really close. I've heard other people talk about experiencing similar type howls directed at them. And did you feel it like in your chest or vibrating or did you, how was that experienced by you? No, I didn't hear it vibrate. It, the, the lake I was in was like in a bowl. You know, it was down, there was, uh, not cliffs, but it was down in a bowl. It was straight by a lake. So it kind of echoed through the whole, whole area. But it yeah. didn't. Uh, it, I didn't hear it vibrate or anything like that, or feel it vibrate. So you didn't feel it. In, okay, but it sounded yeah. close. That would you, if on a scale of one to ten, ten being loudest, what number would you give it? Uh, eight. Got it. That's that's pretty loud. Yeah. <laughs> and did it sound? Uh, and this may be an obvious question, but it did sound like it was directed at you. Uh, the second time, yes. <laughs> When I was, because I was looking right at the, the area where it came from, and I heard it again, and it was, you could almost tell it was, come from the exact same spot it came from the first time. So okay. it was very, very creepy. <laughs> very creepy. I saw the photograph, and I'm, uh, I'm guessing that was from the '90s. Of uh, was that you in a boat with two other people? That's me with the big wide brim hat on. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I saw that. And mm -hmm. I saw the vegetation behind you. It looked very thick. I, I'm from the Midwest, originally from Minnesota, and so I, mm -hmm. I know what those forests look like. And then there's a lake, and it's just, but the forest can be so thick, filled with, mm -hmm. you know, mosquitoes and wood ticks and poison. You know, it's very thick mm -hmm. in there, and so something could easily be observing you. And, and you're in the middle of a lake, like you said, and you couldn't even see it unless it was making movement with the, the brush or something. Well, that area wow. up there was about 20 feet up from the lake, and I'd only been back there a few times because there was willows and and briars, and you had to practically crawl. <clears throat> there was a game trail through there along that edge, but you practically had to crawl through there because there was so much willows you know, overhanging each other and stuff like that. Yeah. So I I did I I only went up there a couple times the whole in like 10 years, you know, eight or 10 years. So sure. It, it yeah. was pretty, it, it wasn't worth it. <laughs> and have you had anything else like that happen to you? No, no, I have not. Wow. In, in fact, I, I, I've, been, I, I've been going out there for, uh, let's see, she, they bought it in like 84. I've been going out there for almost nine years before that happened. And, and and like I said, I was I was so comfortable out there. I mushroom hunt out there by myself. I fish by myself. I did. I walked through every inch of them woods back there, and I never experienced anything like that. So. Yeah. No, that's. I've heard other people say that where they're you know, been living in an area, experiencing an area, camping in an area, and and for years and nothing, and then all of a sudden something mm -hmm. like that can happen. Well, well, I had uh, not actually not even thought about it for a long, long time. I, I, I watched your videos, and I thought, you know mm -hmm. what? That started bringing back the, you know, what I, what I experienced, and, and I thought, I can't really explain what I heard. I can just approximate what I heard. Then, I, and I saw that video, and I thought, that's as close as I can get to what it sounded yeah. like. And it brought yeah. chills. <laughs> it chills when I heard it because. People, I, I, I'd never been scared before, but yeah. that was the, probably one of the worst fears I had because I didn't know what it was and and just the unknown, you know, and something you, you've never experienced before. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah, if you could go, oh, I think that's a bear. Uh, that very sounds like a mountain lion, I'm pretty sure, mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. That's that's That's... Still, you know, scary, but something like that is a whole nother level. Um, yeah, I've been at, I've been out in those woods at night. I've heard coyotes, you know, a lot of turkeys and 
deer snort at you every once in a while and you, you know it kind of startles you but you know what it is you know and, and that, that was totally i know that was not something that was normally there wow wow well that is really interesting and uh you know like you said uh, you haven't had anything else happen and yet it's still very clear uh that day and that that uh, moment when that happened and that was what 31 years ago Mm mm-hmm yeah yeah it seemed like that long but it was yeah yeah 1993 so that'd be 31 1993 31 years ago yeah 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 that area when when 1993 was uh really remote i mean it wasn't anything like it is today there was no Mm. uh not very many farms out that way it was they had just reclaimed the strip mines and it was really remote and um it's one of them things you, you hear on tv if you scream nobody will hear you you know <laughs> and yeah. that's what it was. That's, the way, that's the way it was back there and, and the more i got thinking about it something did happen nobody know even come looking for me till dark because they all knew i was going to be out there all day you know so <laughs> yeah sure and then we didn't have cell phones 31 years ago you could just pull the phone out yeah. Right, you're right. Exactly. Well, they had no cell service in that area anyway, where I was at <laughs> back then. Yeah. So, oh, like, yeah. So, anyway, yeah, I'm a, I'm yeah. a big, really big fan of your uh, your channel. That's what got me to thinking about it. I just thought I'd share it. And all right, well, I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for watching my channel. It's been quite an experience uh, mm-hmm. doing the channel and then mm-hmm. uh, talking mm-hmm. to people like yourself and mm-hmm. kind of stepping into this this world of big big foot and stuff so and so, yeah. just one other thing here um i've only told three people <laughs> i told my wife i told my best friend and i told my grandson when he got old enough and that was probably wow. about seven years after it happened you know i just yeah i didn't tell my mom because at the time my dad was sick with cancer <clears throat> and she was out there by herself a lot I didn't want to scare her, you know. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't want to mm-hmm. have her worry about stuff, so I didn't tell her. Yeah, I still haven't told her. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, that that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, I'll just uh, use your first name and, and okay. Uh, like I said, and you're from Illinois, so we'll, mm-hmm. uh, you know, so it's pretty, pretty broad. But yeah, okay. that's uh, quite. You know, it's it's a very simple thing. You well, you just heard something, and and I and. and I've heard enough people talking and and after the fact, and and they're hesitant to tell people and and only close people or, or however they handle it, but they're very uh, selective with 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 the information, yeah. because people like to fill in the blanks for you and say, well, mm-hmm. Mitch, that was a that was a bear, obviously, and you just yeah, boy, yeah, you know. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't even remember what I was thinking. <laughs> Yeah. Because it was like, all I can, I had like tunnel vision for the for the dock. I was it. people don't somebody who's never experienced something like that doesn't realize you know that what it's like. You know, it's it was it's something something I don't forget, and I don't I don't really want to experience it again. Even though it's kind of cool that it happened, you know. Yeah. I, I don't want to. I wouldn't want to happen again. <laughs> I couldn't be out there in the dark like that, like you do sometimes out in the, out in the woods. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I wonder, but I'm like, well, this is what I'm doing, and I, I love it out here. But I, I know the second mm-hmm. I hear something like that, my body would, you know, I'm a human like you, and I would feel a very similar kind of thing. Like, oh my God, mm-hmm. <laughs> this is what yeah. have I done? Very vulnerable. I need to leave now. Yep, I think so. exactly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm glad you found the, the the video that you said, and, and you said that was. Pretty much what you heard is from that that video. It sounded that very was, similar to that. That was about as close as they could get. Remember, I told you it sounded like somebody just yelled into a megaphone, like "Wow!" Yeah, just a really long let, went out. Um, wow, and it just kept going, going, going. And it was the same pit, kind of the same pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like you said, it sounded. It that one's more sounded more human at the end. The one I the one I heard had more of a guttural at the end you know it wasn't quite as human at the end it was more uh, like a turn turn not a growl but more guttural sound now i i i think my wife believed me because i was out there every weekend and i finally just told when i i, I kind of lied to her first i didn't tell her first i i just told her i said you know i'm getting kind of 
little older, I said, I, I don't think I should be going out there by myself in case something happens. And I didn't tell her, tell her the story until, oh, it was probably at least a year later, you know, because wow. I, I, I didn't want to say. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. You know, it's kind of, it's hard to explain it, right? Especially right after it happens. Yeah, you got to process it and think about it and everything, and because you, you, you're trying to think, did I really, did that really happen, or you know, did I hear what I heard, or am I going to make a fool of myself? I start telling people, you know, and things like that, and but no, I heard what I heard. It was you don't get that scared by hearing nothing, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I'm glad your wife believed you. That was that's yeah, and my my friend my friend believed me too. And, Good. Yeah, because because he knows I don't make stuff up. He. He he knows me really well. He's a, I don't I don't make stuff like that up. So he believed me too. But yeah. my grandson he was really into that kind of stuff. So I, I think he kind of he wanted to go out there and look for Bigfoot tracks. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. And I said, well, we can do that. And, you know, I don't really care. I don't think we'll find any. But, so we went out there. We looked around. He called them zombie tracks, but you know, he wanted to look for Bigfoot tracks and, and didn't, didn't see any. So. All right, Mitch. Well, thank you. Well, good talking with you. Well, nice talking to you, too. Thank you very much. I really thought that was an interesting interview. Again, it was a very kind of a simple event. It was just two howls. This whole thing probably lasted less than 30 seconds. He didn't see anything, but just it just changed his whole perspective on his experience with the outdoors and life and who he's going to tell this to. And he said he was um, really happy to talk to me about this. And just really kind of lay it all out and just kind of dialogue without somebody interjecting and telling them maybe what he experienced was something else. And that's what a lot of people are afraid of. they just not sure really what to do with this information. So, all right, you guys. Thank you for watching. And I appreciate that. Uh, and your comments are great. And it's a great time of year. We're going to continue doing this. I really appreciate you guys watching. We'll see you in the next one. As always, keep hiking.